There are fundamental laws woven throughout the fabric of the universe. Natural forces that govern the motions of a finely tuned system in which our planet is but one small part. These unseen powers make apples fall and help lift rockets into outer space. They cause tides to rise and recede. Roller coasters to race down narrow tracks. Penguins to slide. Children to fly. And Earth to rotate and orbit the sun so precisely, we can calculate its movements to within fractions of minutes or miles. Almost four centuries ago, one of history's greatest minds set out to explore these mysteries. And along the way, he revolutionized science. His name was Isaac Newton. While living in this farmhouse, 100 miles north of London, Newton developed his initial ideas for the universal laws of motion and gravity, the mathematics of calculus, and the properties of light all before the age of 25. In 1668, his fascination with optics and the cosmos inspired him to design and construct the first reflecting telescope, an invention that helped pave the way to spectacular tools of modern astronomy. Three decades later, Newton published the results of his groundbreaking research on the nature of light. The book was filled with accounts and illustrations of his classic experiments, including the landmark discovery that when focused through a prism, a beam of white light separates into a spectrum of its component colors. But the scientist's unquenchable thirst for knowledge and truth wasn't limited to the physical realm. He also poured his heart into a lifelong quest to know, worship, and proclaim the reality of God. In his epic volume, The Principia, one of the greatest scientific works in history, Newton wrote, This most beautiful system of the sun, planets, and comets could only proceed from the counsel and dominion of an intelligent and powerful being. And it follows that the true God is living and supremely perfect he endures from eternity to eternity, and he rules all things. Sir Isaac Newton's resolute belief in God's existence is also evident in numerous descriptions of a legendary conversation that may have occurred in the library of his London residence. Perhaps the encounter went something like this. Inspired by his studies of the universe and the motions of the heavenly orbs within his field of view, Newton hired a skilled artisan to construct a miniature replica of the solar system. When complete, the mechanism included a large gilded ball representing the sun and smaller spheres for the planets and their moons. Each was attached to wire arms of varying lengths and geared together by cogs and belts that could move the components in perfect harmony. It was a masterpiece of engineering. One afternoon, as Newton worked alone in his study, a friend stopped by to visit. He too was a man of science, but unlike Sir Isaac, he believed that the universe came into being on its own without the intervention of divine purpose or design. Newton's model immediately captured his attention. And when he turned the crank, his eyes widened in wonder as the orbiting bodies performed their choreographed ballet. After a few moments, the agnostic scientist exclaimed, What an exquisite model this is! Who made it? 
Without a hint of a smile, Newton looked up from his work and replied, Nobody made it. A bit startled, his colleague responded, <laughs> Evidently, you did not understand my question. I, I asked you, who made this splendid device? Again, Newton solemnly assured him, Nobody. Instead, this collection of matter you so much admire just came together under its own power to assume its magnificent form. You must think me a fool. Of course somebody made it. He is a genius, and I want to know who he is. After pausing for a moment, Newton replied, My friend, even though this beautiful model is but a modest imitation of a much grander system whose laws you know quite well, I am unable to convince you that this mere toy exists without a designer and maker. Yet you profess to believe that the great original from which this replica is taken once came into being entirely on its own accord. Now tell me, by what sort of reasoning do you arrive at such an inconsistent conclusion? Newton's friend could offer no rebuttal. Instead, he humbly acknowledged, The Lord, he is God. <laughs> <laughs>